good morning. I've been seeing online everywhere these sourdough pumpkin cinnamon loaves and I need to make my own version of it because I have not delved into the world of sourdough. I don't have the time at the moment to delve into the world of sourdough. However, I do love making yeast bread and honestly like the easiest yeast bread ever, but I'm gonna try to modify it today and see if we can do a pumpkin cinnamon loaf because I tried to find one online and I couldn't find one for what I was looking for. Everything popped up with like actual pumpkin bread, like a banana bread style pumpkin bread, which is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to do regular like yeast bread, but with pumpkin and cinnamon in it. So we're gonna see if we can make it happen. And if this video exists, it's cause it will. And I wanted to share it with you all because it is going to be easy, but it's gonna be so much simpler than doing a sourdough. Mm -mm -mm. This is so good. I just thrifted this bowl. I'm obsessed. First, we need to let our yeast rise in some warm water. This is actually not a step of the usual recipe that I use. I just want you to mix everything together, but I kind of like doing my own modified version and just like giving it a little extra love. Good bowl. Bowl secured. Next, I have my recipe on my other phone here. Yeast. We need two teaspoons of active dry yeast. I like using the Fleischmann's. You can just keep it in the fridge. Do I have enough in here? Might not have enough, we'll see. One teaspoon. Oh, I just have enough and there's a little bit left in here and I have a whole nother jar. Now this is where the modifications are coming in because normally this recipe calls for one and a half cups of very warm water. However, we want to add pumpkin to this. So we need to subtract some of the water content because the pumpkin's kind of going to be replacing that. Maybe we'll do like a third of the recipe in pumpkin then. I'll leave the recipe down below in the description of what I end up actually ending up with. So we need about a cup of hot water. The water from my tap is honestly hot enough. So I just let it get hot for a moment and it's literally smoking. So one, two, so that's a cup. Now I'm going to leave this here for a moment just to get all bubbly and rise. I also want salt in there. I'm gonna wait to put the salt in. Wait to put the salt in. Normally this doesn't call for sugar, this recipe, but I kind of feel like it also just helps the yeast. So I'm just gonna add a little bit, like a, about a teaspoon of sugar in there. Okay, it's already gotten bubbly and it's only been like five minutes. Let me show you. This is what you're looking for. I actually don't know where I had you, but I'm hoping this is decent. So we have this all bubbly. I want to add my pumpkin now. So I'm going to do half a cup of pumpkin. And we're also going to add a bit of salt. I ended up getting this pumpkin on sale. It's like $4 for the can. I was so excited. You no, know, this Edie Smith pumpkin is so expensive. And it's pure pumpkin. It's not pumpkin pie mix. So let's add our salt. I don't know why I'm doing it out of my shaker. I'm silly. I have like an entire box. I'm not gonna do it over my bowl in case I spill it. Salt. Okay, now we need our pumpkin. It's gonna go in here. We need a pretty even, okay, half cup of pumpkin in. Then we're gonna have to put this away after. I'm gonna use my spatula, I'm not gonna use a whisk, just to mix all of this together. Okay, now we have to add our flour. We need three cups of flour. I don't have to do this step. This is just me being extra. Since my half cup is dirty and my full cup is dirty, I'm gonna go by third cup. So hopefully this doesn't confuse you. So we're gonna do one, two, so that's one cup. We're gonna go cup at a time just to make sure it all incorporates nicely. I'm gonna start doing it in the bowl here and then we'll see. This recipe usually makes the dough very wet, but I don't want a super, super wet dough. Usually I add a little bit more flour and I need it a lot more than the recipe calls for just because I don't like my dough wet like that. This is like the prettiest color already. It's so orange. Okay, so that's incorporated. Uh, another cup. One. I ended up buying a bunch of flour when it was on sale and I like stocked the whole top of my cupboard with it because it was on sale for like four dollars a bag it was so cheap show you guys this is what this is looking like i'm just mixing all the flour in until it's incorporated i'm eventually gonna have to use my hands because this is just gonna not work we already have kind of like a ball forming so it's good i think i'm just gonna eyeball how much more flour i use here and we're probably gonna switch to just using my hands so this is about to get messy I'm gonna do one more cup at a time just to see how much I end up needing. It kind of depends on where you live. It's been pretty dry here in Toronto, so I don't know how much flour I'm really gonna end up having to put in here. So I'm 
literally just folding the flower in right now, just getting it all incorporated. I need like an extra hand for all of this. So far, so good. As I said, the recipe that I usually use makes a really wet dough, but I don't want a wet dough. I think what I'm gonna do now is pour this onto the counter. The counter's been washed. I recommend washing your counter first before you do this. So this will make it a lot easier now to try to incorporate this flour. It's gonna make a mess though. I hate cleaning the counter after doing this. Especially if it's a wet dough, it like sticks all over your counter. I'm pretty much just kneading the flour into it. Trying to get all the flour in there. I wanna do this until the dough gets smooth. I can already feel it's still pretty wet, so I'm probably gonna add that last cup still. As I said, this is like easy compared to doing sourdough. It's not really that complicated, I find. I'm getting flour all over the floor though. You don't even have to do all of these steps. The original recipe that I do for this bread literally just tells you to put it all in a bowl, mix everything together, and then it'll be all wet and shaggy and you just let it rise. But I'm just going the extra mile here to try to make this loaf extra good. Okay, it's starting to turn into a good little ball here. But it's no longer sticky, like it's not sticking to my hands anymore. So. I'm gonna call that good and what we're gonna do and I'm just gonna literally take this same bowl and pop it in there I'm gonna put a damp cloth over top because I don't have plastic wrap at the moment and we're gonna let it rise for like half an hour or so in my microwave because it's very warm in there don't turn on the microwave and it'll double by then because it's really warm in my apartment <laughs> okay I just dampened my tea towel and it's gonna go in the microwave or whatever warm place that you have and then just leave it until it doubles. Again, my apartment's pretty warm, so probably it's gonna double fast. Now while I'm waiting for that to double, I need to clean up this mess. Okay, at this point, you kinda have to figure out how long you think it's gonna take your dough to rise because you wanna preheat your oven to 450 degrees and put your Dutch oven inside of it, but you wanna do it a half an hour before you think your dough's gonna rise because you're gonna have to heat up this Dutch oven in there for half an hour. So if you're using a Dutch oven, I don't know any other methods if you have to do the same thing. I doubt if you're using like a bread pan of sorts, you're going to want to do this, which means that since I think it's only going to take half an hour for my dough to double, I'm going to put my Dutch oven in the oven now so it starts preheating. This Dutch oven has been very well used. If anyone knows how to get all of these marks off of your Dutch oven, let me know. But I've scrubbed and scrubbed and they don't come off. So I'm going to stick this in there. Okay, I think it is time. It's been about half an hour. So I'm curious to see. Yep. Okay, it has doubled. There. I just washed my hands again because I wanna make sure they're nice and clean. However, we are going to make some cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna take about a third of a cup of sugar. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of cinnamon. I'm just gonna use the back of this to mix this all up. I am just going to lay a bit of flour out on the counter just so nothing sticks. We're going to take our dough out. Beautiful. I love how orange it is. Okay, we're going to now deflate this and stretch this dough into a rectangle. Kind of like if you're making cinnamon rolls, but just be careful not to rip it. Probably good enough. Okay, I probably have it about 12 inches by 12 inches right now. And what we're gonna do is take our cinnamon sugar and we're just going to cover it like you kind of would with a cinnamon bun. I feel like the more sugar the better. Now that's all covered, what we're gonna do is we're going to flip it halfway over like that, throw some more cinnamon sugar on this part that we folded, flip this side over, more cinnamon sugar, and then we're gonna roll it. And this will make the swirls. So we have like a big log here. Now, I basically am going to try to form it back into a ball. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it forward and then pull it back. We're trying to just seal all those edges in so that none of that escapes. I feel like I'm kind of pushing it as far as it's gonna go because it's about to tear on the top here. The bottom doesn't look the greatest, so I'm kind of scared if this is going to... <laughs> Calm down. Okay, 
cause any issues. I'm just trying to make sure it like seals. Okay, I think I've gotten into seal as much as I kind of can on the bottom. J kind of pulls. Okay. I think it's as good as we're gonna get it. We need a bit of parchment paper now. I think I have just enough. Now, if you're doing sourdough, I know you can do scores and stuff like that. I find like scoring this doesn't do a huge kind of deal to it, but I'm gonna try to do a little, just a tiny little score on the top here. She's a really sharp knife. Okay, then we have our little score. We'll see how that goes because I kind of cut into where the cinnamon is. So we'll see if that works. Okay, I'm gonna take it out to my Dutch oven and we're gonna put this in there. I'm gonna move you guys back a bit. Okay, Dutch oven time. Dutch oven. I'm gonna plop our little baby in there carefully. There she is. Lid on. We're gonna put it into the oven for half an hour and then take it out and let the top get brown for about 15 minutes after that. So, and she is. I'm so excited to see how this turns out. But now I gotta clean this. <laughs> okay, it's been half an hour. I'm all gloved up because we gotta take the lid off of it so that the top can get brown. I'm honestly so nervous to see how this bread looks. Oh my gosh, it's already getting browned. 10 minutes. Okay, we gotta take her out of the oven. I think it's time. I'm hoping it's time. I'm hoping I didn't burn her. Okay, she's getting crispy. I'm so nervous. I've never made bread that has like sugar and stuff in it. I'm hoping it's cooked through and it's not all gummy or something inside. Okay, we have to wait now for it to cool a little bit before we can cut into it or else it will get gummy. This is what she's looking like. It's looking so freaking good. And look at how it split. It split so nice. I've never had a split like that before. She looks so pretty. I'm so excited for this. I want it to cool as fast as I can because I want to try it. But look how beautiful it is. Like not even sourdough. Beautiful love her okay the sun is about to go away so i don't think i can wait any longer to cut into this or else it's going to be so dark in here okay i don't recommend cutting into this until it's completely cool because it's going to make it gummy but i'm doing this just because i want to try a piece for you all and i really want to see what it looks like inside Let's see. it's definitely going to be a lot less fluffy because I cut it into it while it's still hot. But we did get a bit of a swirl, a little bit of a swirl going here. Okay, I had to get a little picture before the sun went away of it. I put some butter on it and I turned on the overhead light, which looks awful, but I wanted to try it before you disappeared on me. Look at this piece. This is really good. It's not like, a really pumpkin-y, but you get the cinnamon in it. It's like, mm, you get some of this cinnamon sugar and mix it into your butter. This with some cinnamon sugar cream cheese. Oh my gosh, yes. I love the extra cinnamon sugar on it. And this was so easy. This only took me like two hours to make. Let me know if you guys end up making this bread. And if you have any tips to make this any better, also let me know below. But I feel like this couldn't be any simpler unless you just didn't actually need it. But I like needing it because I feel like it just makes it, you know, extra good and it's not that complicated to knead it and then it also still like makes it turn out so pretty but happy fall i hope you enjoy the bread